anything. I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, home the bell what up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode nine of Bel Air. And I must say, I'm not sure if I liked how they dropped these episodes this season. You had three episodes, three episodes, two episodes, and then these last two. To me, it's either drop them all at once or just give them to us one week at a time. But nonetheless, this is episode nine. And in this episode, we're going to see what's the backlash and what comes after Amira after she ODs falls into the pool and tries to take her own life. Now, Carlton, there's going to be a lot of weight on his shoulders, and you know everyone's going to be pointing their fingers at him. But before we jump into this and we break down this episode, if you like Bel Air content or if you like other TV shows, breakdowns, predictions, recaps, then you're at the right spot. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And hey, we're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need under 300, so help us get there. But let's jump into it. This is the recap of episode nine, Bel Air. Starting off the episode, everyone is having flashbacks of what just happened to Amira and how the police were being called, how she may have OD'd off some fentanyl. We never knew what Amira was really on. Was it drugs? Was it liquor? Well, it turns out it's drugs. And Carlton's been trying to get in touch with her, but the family won't see him. And his parents pick him up. And they're kind of concerned because they don't know if Carlton's involved in this. They're unaware of what's actually happening, not to mention what Will and them and Black Sets were doing to the land that got caught on fire with jazz. It's a lot going on. Once Carlton gets back home, Will is trying to talk to him because he just been texting Quentin about Black Sets and they need to re-up on products. They took this thing international. They blew up, but now they got to keep this momentum going. But Carlton is not trying to hear any of that. And he's blaming everything that happened to Amira on Will because Will and Lisa knew that she was back on drugs, but no one gave Carlton a heads up. So he's blaming everything on Will. Now, of course, Phil and Viv, they hear this argument going on and they bring both of the boys in to talk to him. And this is where things get a little strange because Carlton starts to reveal some information. While Phil and Viv are asking Carlton, did he relapse? I told you some information was let out. And Carlton says, it's funny that I'm the one being interrogated here. Did, uh, did William tell you guys what he got into? How about the little campfire, the little bonfire that burned some stuff down over at Omar's property? Frederick is still ripping and running the streets, gambling. We know his mother is back. Him and Jeffrey aren't seeing eye to eye, but Jeffrey's still making that attempt. While he's out here gambling and shooting some dice, he ends up winning some money. But before he leaves, a G-Wagon pulls up. Tinted windows. Now, our first instincts in America is to run. He's looking and seeing who it is. They hop out. He tries to fight them off, but it's 2v1, and they end up whooping on him. They kick him in the gut. They spit on him, and then they leave him out there bruised up. Will's sitting in the room, and he's thinking Uncle Phil's about to come in here and talk to him about burning down the site, but it's Aunt Viv. And Aunt Viv says, take your phone out. I've been too soft on you. Your mama's been thinking I'm too soft. You need to call your mom and explain to her everything that's going on because you're doing the same impulsive stuff that got you down here in the first place, Will. You're out here acting a damn fool. And did she mention Jazz is the one that's locked up for this? Matter of fact, Will, you might need to go to jail for a little bit. Maybe that discipline right there and that scare tactic might actually put you on the right path. So Will is spooked at this point. Ivy's still trying to plan this wedding for our girl, Hillary. Now, we know what Hillary's really feeling deep down inside, and that's the love for Jazz. Now, this LaMarcus thing, it might work out, but we really know that she wants it to be Jazz, and this is all a fairy tale. She told us that in the beginning of the episode. So Ivy's trying to do a larger-than-life wedding because she thinks that she's the maid of honor, but that's really Ashley. Now, in the meeting, we see that Hillary ends up getting a text message, so she has to leave out, but she's telling Ivy, don't go too crazy. Just hold it down for me because she really wants this wedding to be canceled. The text message that Hillary received, it was from Will to go down to the police precinct because they're picking up Jazz. Now, Will comes down. Hillary's here and Jazz gets out. Looks like he's been in here for a month, but it was really just overnight. So he gets out. And of course, Will is loud. Man, dang, they got you on some stuff you didn't even do because we know that Will was there participating. And Jazz is like, chill, chill, chill. I ain't want you to be a part of this anyway because something like this could happen. But then Hillary and Jazz get to talking, and he's surprised that she even came down here. 
He's thinking that her dad would be upset, but Phil doesn't know that they're down here. And you remember Yolanda, who was running for council? Well, she ends up showing up to pick up Jazz because she supports the community. We know that Uncle Phil, they say he's against it, but he's not. And Hillary sees this, and she gets a little bit jealous that Jazz is riding off with another woman. Carlton goes to Amira's house with some flowers. The family still hasn't let him see her, but when he's getting ready to leave, her mother comes out. And he's like, hey, I know times are hard. I just wanted to let Amira know that I'm thinking about her. Now, the mother is saying, we don't have anything against you. She just needs time to recover. And then Carlton brings up the fact that this might be a tough time for him because Amira said that she lost her sister. But the true story is Amira never had a sister. She got into a car wreck and the driver of the other vehicle passed away. So it's just been sticking with her. But she doesn't want to put that blame on her or that guilt on her. So she's been saying that she has a sister. So this has Carlton wondering, why wouldn't she tell me the truth? Why wouldn't she open up to me? I thought I was her person when he goes back and talks to Lisa about it. While Carlton is talking to Lisa about Amira, Will shows up and he's like, is she all right? Man, I hope everything's okay. Uh, but forget all that. Black says we need to get on it because Quentin's hitting us up. And Carlton's like, man, I thought you really cared, but you're really here just for your own personal gain. So Carlton gets up and says he's done with Black says. And Will's like, nah, man, you don't mean that. Then Carlton leaves. He tries to talk to Lisa and Lisa's like, damn, Will, you're something else. You know Carlton's going through this and you come up here and talk about yourself and your business. That was messed up, Will. Hillary shows up to Jazz's house after he got bailed out and he left with Yolanda. Now she's showing up. It's me, Jazz. And she's coming to hear straight business. No beating around the bush. Yes, she's engaged, but something just keeps telling her to come and talk to Jazz. Something ain't right. And you hear Jazz say, unfinished business. So what we're gathering from this point is they need one night together to get off of each other. And if they don't, then that means it's meant to be. But you know what one thing does? One thing leads to another. Carlton is at the edge. And you know what happens when you get to the edge? Sometimes you just want to jump. Well, Carlton, he calls up his old supplier and he's like, hey, I need you to come through. But when they get there, it turns out he's telling Carlton some sound information. Carlton, don't go through with this. You don't want to do that. Carlton said, you're wasting my time. Why are you here? He says, I don't want to be the friend that knocks you off your rocker. Basically, I don't want to be the one to get you back into the dope game. Carlton, you're doing so well, man. Just just leave it alone. We see our two fathers in the same predicament. Both of their sons are watching them closely, and they're trying to make a good impression on them. Jeffrey, he got the instance going on with Frederick, and Frederick wanted to be in the streets. He didn't got beat up by some quote-unquote bookies. And then we got Carlton potentially relapsing, having his issues with a mirror. So Phil and Jeffrey. Their relationship and bond has gotten stronger since the first two seasons. And he's looking at Jeffrey more as, hey, you need to be a father. So let's make a good example for the boys and make the right decisions. Because we know that Uncle Phil is on the opposite side of Black Sess and how they want to help the community out. And since he's supporting Omar, it's kind of taken away from the community. Carlton is losing it because he can't get the drugs that he wants. He's sitting in the vehicle and he actually has some drugs. They show Will walking up to a window. Will knocks on the window, but it turns out he's talking to Lisa's father. And there's a lady at the door telling Carlton, you dropped your wallet. Now, Carlton has a decision to make. Does he hit these drugs and relapse? Or does he throw them away and get the help that he needs? Will ends up going to talk to Lisa's father. Remember, he's over at the police station. And he's confessing to the crime that he committed with Jazz and saying that he did it, and no matter what, he's willing to take the rap for it. Now, the thing is, he's a minor, so he doesn't have any representation, so everything he's saying is really going to get tossed out. But Lisa's father already knew that, so he called up Phil himself. Now, Phil comes in, and he's like, listen, I know you made some mistakes when you first got here, but you're not the same irresponsible boy that I met a year ago. You really stepped it up this year. You started a successful business. So we're going to make this right. And this is also Uncle Phil turning a new leaf on representing Omar because he knows that the community, they really want to support everything that Will has going on. You remember that one night that they said that they needed 
to get each other off of each other? Well, they have it. And it's over at Jazz's house. And they smoking a little bit of that green sticky icky icky. And they're just catching up. Now, they disagreed on a lot of things. They ate some ice cream because you get the munchies. But then they agreed on liking the ice cream. But while they're sitting here, Jazz admits that he may have let his ego get in the way when it came to Hillary. And that's one of his biggest mistakes. So for him, he's like, man, I, I just want to, you know, get things back to where it was. And I really do love you. But we know that she's getting married. And things just can't go how you want all the time. Now, everyone goes and meets up at the healing circle. Now, Amira isn't here, but everyone's here to support her. Lisa's here. and She says that Amira is the friend that she never knew that she needed. Will is here saying that Amira is a fighter. And everyone's looking around for Carlton. Where is Carlton? Is he going to show up? But everyone needed this healing moment because everyone's going through something. And sometimes someone else's downfalls you know their stumbles in life are a learning experience for everyone and that's what they're doing right now everyone is absorbing this and they're looking at their lives and trying to do better jeffrey and penelope are walking now that same g-wagon that whooped on frederick you can see it creeping in the background but jeffrey and penny they're trying to get back on the same page the only thing is that distraction from that g-wagon jeffrey is peeping it and he's saying listen penny Follow my lead. You don't have to lead me to where this truck is going to be so they can get me. We can get out of this. I've been thinking about what you said about us going off and starting fresh. So they hide off in the alley. The truck drives off, but they got to go back and tell Frederick about everything that's going on. Because Jeffrey, he was a bad man back in his day. And now he's not trying to be in that life anymore. Carlton ends up showing up to the healing circle. Now, Amira, of course, she's at the house doing her recovery. Now, Carlton definitely needs this because he was about to, in the truck, take a hit of the drugs. But luckily, he backed out of it, and he came here to be around those that love him. Even though him and Will aren't on the same page, he still knows that Will's going to have that support for him. Lisa's going to have that support for him. His family is. Now, the first thing I will say is that night, <laughs> Jazz did ask Hillary, are they going to F-U-C-K? Yeah, after they got done doing a little smoking, but they didn't. She ended up falling asleep. He's waking up and making some drinks. So she's getting ready to leave, and she's like, well, you know, I, I do like you, Jazz, and uh, this is probably the last time we're going to see each other. He says, the next time I see you, you'll be married. She said, yeah. So this relationship looks like it's coming to a, a major halt. Damn, Jazz loved that girl. Well, Phil's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to get the community behind him. So Yolanda shows up. Now it turns out Will was the one that told her, listen, my uncle, you may not seen eye to eye with him, but he's not working with Omar no more. He's here to give back to the community and he wants to make things right. And Uncle Phil tells Yolanda, if you can get the people behind me, then trust me, I can make something out of nothing. She says, I got the people. So these two teaming up will be good for South L.A. And we can get the black community and the brown community back into the game. Black says is taking off. Carlton and Will, they put their differences behind them. Will actually holds it down and goes and meets with some investors. And Black says it just got picked up by a nice investor that has the same interest as the company. Well, it turns out this is Carlton's arch nemesis. He used to date Lisa, and his dad is one of the major investors. So Will and Carlton, they're a little upset, but he's back, and he's like, boys, fill me in. We got a lot of work to do with this black cess. And they're like, oh, my goodness, this is not what we signed up for. All right, there you go to recap for Episode 9 of Bel Air. Let me know what you think about Carlton. Is Carlton going to make it the rest of the season, and if there is a season four, is he going to make it? Staying clean, off the drugs, a clear mind, because we got to get Black Sess up and running internationally. We got to take this global, baby. But let me know what you think. We got one more episode. I'm Mode IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need 300 more. So, hey, do your part. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.